There are dangerous, evil... We're just a couple of months out from getting the first three episodes of what is shaping up to be a rather juicy spin-up series based off the trailer alone, but that also raises the question, what is Gen V really going to be all about? The voiceover from the trailer sets up Jazz Sinclair's Marie Moreau as a starlightest freshman at GU who will be personally introduced to the darker underbelly of the soup business over the course of eight episodes that will air from September to November. We have already have been made aware of the fact that Godolkin University is dangerous and that there are evil people at that school, but who exactly are these people and what are these dangers? The promotional description for Gen V states that the students will unravel a hidden conspiracy on campus which plays into the high school musical Hunger Games vibe they were going for, but the trailer doesn't really let in too much about it. Unless you're like us and you sat through it with a magnifying glass and a fine tooth comb trying to catch all the hidden details, well, that's why we're here, so without any delays, these are the 10 hidden details from the boys Gen V trailer that will blow your mind. But before we go to our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Cindy is back and she's gonna have a big role to play. This is quite a blink and you'll miss it the moment from the trailer, but it is an important one given the character that is involved. The Gen V trailer opens with shots of A-Train, Maeve, and Homelander as Clancy Brown's character Richard Brinkerhoff tells someone that what makes true hero is sacrifice. Immediately after he says this, we get a very rapid and chaotic montage of scenes, which includes one of the series' main characters, Chance Perdomo's Andre Anderson, getting covered in blood, and also depicts a few instances where it looks like Vought security is trying to subdue some kind of threat. But at the beginning of this montage, you get a very short sequence that shows everyone's favorite Eleven parody running around in a glass cell reminiscent of Loki's cage in the first Avengers movie, Cindy. Cindy was introduced in Season 2 of The Voice as one of the unwilling and unwitting test subjects of the Vought-run mental health institution, Sage Grove, but she immediately established herself as quite a force to be reckoned with. Her ability to manipulate pressure is as dead as it sounds. She can tank AR bullets like they're nothing, and her durability is high enough to withstand a full force shock from Stormfront, who was one of the stronger soups in the series up until that point. She ends up escaping Sage Grove in the aftermath of a breakout she organized in the first place, and hitchhikes a ride from some dude in the countryside. The last we've heard of her was from a 7 on 7 segment uploaded to Vought's official YouTube channel, which is pure comedy gold if you guys haven't checked it out yet. According to Cameron Coleman's report, Cindy has become a hitchhiking serial killer but the reason behind that might just be revealed in Gen V, because her split-second inclusion in the trailer cannot be coincidence. She appears to be about the same age as a Godolkin University student, so maybe her recent history with Vought isn't as recent as we're thinking. There is another moment from the trailer that explains what we're trying to imply here better, so we'll just leave this till we get to that moment. So let's move on to the next detail. Marie Moreau on American Hero? American Hero is the boys' version of Big Brother, the bachelorette, American Idol, and every other kind of insane reality TV show you can think of, all mashed into one production, whose ultimate winner gets a chance to join the seven. Of course, given that it is a Vought production, most of the actual contestants don't really ever have a chance at winning now that Homelander is running things. I mean, you guys saw who the winners for season three of the show were, but it's possible that we're about to get a look at the other side of the fence with Marie Moreau because of a single frame from the trailer. At around the 32 second mark of the trailer, you can see that the GU sign that Marie was posing in front of is covered by an American flag as the shot transitions to the next one. This could be nothing or it could be an indication that Marie is heading to the American Hero Mansion. Honestly, we'd be happy with just a cameo from her in the show as well because we just want to get a glimpse of the madness that goes on inside of it. And we do have influencers as part of the cast. Lizzie Broadway's character Emma Shaw is an inch-sized fitness influencer in the realm of GU, so who knows? Eric Kripke has already done a musical with the boys, so why not reality TV as well? But there is one thing that is a bit less ambiguous than speculators when it comes to in-universe soup media. Adam Bork's new project. The Borkverse continues to expand within the confines of the boys' universe as fan-favorite character Adam Bork has been confirmed for Gen V. Not only that, it appears as though his efforts with the Bork cut have renewed Vought Studios' fate in him as he is set to direct a new show in Gen V which will presumably be set on the college students themselves. Or it's possible that he is the name attached to A-Train's upcoming biopic, Taking the A-Train to Africa, and he's back butting heads with Reggie about how his character 
character's portrayal in the movies made by Vought. We do see A-Train briefly in the trailer, sporting a 7 cap and only see Bork himself for a fraction of a second, where he can be seen giving a chef's kiss to someone off camera. So to be quite frank, your guess is as good as ours, but the one thing we're sure about is that he's going to be the perfect comedy side character for breaking up the more tense moments of Gen V as PJ Byron continues to give us his zanny brand of levity through the vessel of Adam Bork. Godolkin University's Totally Not Competitive Student Rankings As we've mentioned in our intro, the premise of Gen V is essentially High School Musical meets Hunger Games and then gets doused in a vat of the stuff that makes the boys' visual crack for us. So it's naturally quite alarming when we see a GU staff member tell Marie that she has the potential to become the highest-ranked freshman of all time, but she's gotta be careful because she has a target on her back, because that's the same brand of manipulation tactics that Madeleine Stilwell used to use on the seven themselves. R.I.P. Freak, Granny Maddie, but it also brings into focus the very thing that makes Gen V a crossover between these two aforementioned media franchises, the student rankings at Godolkin University. It appears as though every student on campus has given a student ranking that is handed out after evaluating a bunch of factors. Our best guess is things like grades, social media presence, popularity, and the rest of the defining traits of a soup in the world of the voice are what serve as the basis for assigning a student ranking, and Marie does indeed have a target target on her back if what we saw in the trailer is true because despite being a freshman, she's already ranked 8 in the student rankings and when you have staff pulling for you at GU, that usually means your personal life is about to become pure hell. Marie is ranked a few places under another main cast character, Jordan Lee, who has been portrayed as a mystery themselves in the trailer given their unique gender transforming abilities. Expect students at GU to give up an arm, leg, tentacle, and a crystal eyeball just to get a whiff at the top 10. But speaking of the top 10, there is one student from Godolkin, whom we already knew about before Gen B was even properly titled. So it is very curious to see their positioning on the student rankings, or rather, the lack thereof. Golden Boy is missing from the student rankings entirely. If you guys were paying attention to most of the promotional mid-season stuff that the boys' YouTube channel has been putting out since the pandemic, you'd had noticed that around the time season 3 ended, 7-on-7 seven seven host Cameron Coleman started talking about how America's future was about to become a lot brighter thanks to GU star student Golden Boy, who was tipped for success even before the show Gen V was announced. This is why it is extremely telling that Golden Boy is nowhere to be seen in the top 10 student rankings of GU. Patrick Schwarzenegger's character is being set up as the homelander of the series, which will be running concurrently with the boys' season 4, allegedly, so it makes sense that much like Homelander, Golden Boy's PR is just PR that's covering up a monster underneath the surface. Vought International doing propaganda is not news, of course, but not seeing the name Jason, which is going to be Golden Boy's actual name in the series, is all you need to know about how bright America's future is going to be with him leading the charge. Towards the end of the trailer, we also catch Golden Boy fighting against what we can only assume is Marie Moreau and friends, even that our current understanding is Golden Boy will be Homelander 2.0. But once again, the absence of his name from the student rankings entirely is indicative of how reality and expectations will be butting heads with each other throughout Gen B's 8th episode run. But that isn't the biggest mystery we'll see play out in the show. That honor would go to... Maurice Red River Institute flashback. This is yet another blink and you'll miss it moments from the trailer, but right after we see Marie do some target practice with her blood powers and get told that she can become the youngest, most distinguished student in GU history, we get a single shot of her sitting on the Red River Institute logo as tendrils of blood either flow away from her or flow towards her. We're off the former opinion simply because the blood pools near her body and starts tapering off as it moves away, but the bigger question here is why was Marie using her powers in that orphanage? in the first place. Or perhaps even bigger still, who was she using it on? We already know at least one person who has come out of Red River and changed up their entire identity to climb higher in the world, that being Nadia, aka VP candidate Victoria Newman. Marie Moreau comes from the same orphanage, but it looks like her moral compass has got to be a bit more solid than Vicky's. Still, that doesn't mean she might not resort to some less than savory antiques to get what she wants. And ultimately, the point of bringing up Red River is that it might blow 
open Victoria Newman's entire game if Marie decided to say something about her because she knew her from the orphanage. We've already seen Vicky silence one loose end from her past, what's another? And more than that, Red River overall seems to have been created for far more sinister reasons than simply housing orphaned soups. Whatever that reason is, we're most likely going to find out in Gen V Season 1, given that the protagonist is a former resident of the place, and you can bet your butt it's gonna be something even crazier than, say, Soldier Boy being Homelander's dad. Mysterious Forest Chamber Kid After reaching about the halfway point, the trailer's entire tonality shifts from happy-go-lucky college student with big dreams and bigger aspirations for themselves to a straight-up murder mystery that is probably worse than your worst nightmares. We get shots of bloody corridors and black combat boots walking across the said blood, see the main cast doing a lot of action stuff whilst covered in blood, there's a hand that looks like it's been hit with a plague at one point in the trailer, and Marie is opening what looks like the Narnia door in one of the shots, but it's clear that a fantasy wonderland is not what lies on the other side. In at least a couple of shots from the trailer, we see the mysterious forested region stuck inside of what appears to be a storage unit on the inside. Inside is a mysterious kid whose face is covered entirely by fog, so we can't tell who it is supposed to be, but we can deduce that whoever they are, they don't live in that chamber out of pure free will. In fact, the creepy kid from the storage closet might just end up becoming one of the aspects that unravels the organization-wide conspiracy that Gen B is purportedly set to tackle, so keep your eyes peeled for this kid when they show up in the series eventually. They might be the most antisocial teenage soup we meet from Gen V given their living conditions, or they might be the most tortured soul within GU if our assumptions about their lifestyle is correct. Either way, it is guaranteed to entertain. James Ritter equals Coxplosion Dude? By far the funniest and probably the most controversial scene from the trailer has to be the moment where Jazz Sinclair's character makes a dude's working tools explode with her blood-based powers. She talks about it with extreme satisfaction to her friend Jordan Lee, who affectionately terms Marie's actions as Tag Team Coxplosion, and it's a generally sweet sentiment to express given that Marie looked genuinely terrified in the scene where she made the exploding happen. It's possible that she was put in a not-so in viable position by the dude who had his penal apparatus blown to smithereens, and if that turns out to be the case, then good on Marie for standing up for herself and not taking any kind of crap from nobody. But zoom in on the dude's face and pause the screen if you can, is that early 2000s teenage heartthrob Jason Ritter? It looks that way to us, and to be quite honest with you, it would not surprise us given that the boys featured Lori Holden as the Crimson Countess, who was basically a soup cam girl by the time her character was featured in the series. But just in case we've missed to mark with this one, let us know in the comments who you think Jason Ritter should play in Gen V, if not Coxplosion Dude, and also let us know who you think the said dude is being played by. Human Experimentation at GU? One of the only characters in the trailer that gave us the out-and-out -out creeps and heebie-jeebies was Dr. Edison Cardosa. The good doctor has only a couple of scenes in the trailer, but both of them are downright chilling, especially if you spend some time with them in a slowed-down capacity. In one scene, the doctor can be seen hammering something onto someone's back, which looks like an apropathy treatment module, but you can clearly tell that the student underneath his hammer is writhing in agony, and Cardosa's face is entirely expressionless. Combine this with the forest kid, plague hand, and Cindy and a rather chilling realization starts to hit you in the face. And to make things even more obvious, wanna guess the year that GU was founded? 1965. And the year that Red River was established? 1965 again. We know we will sound like conspiracy theorists the moment we utter the next phrase, but you gotta believe us when we say it's all connected, man. Red River and Godolkin University definitely has a rather murky past that has seemingly continued to persist in the present times as well, and looks like this this is the conspiracy that will lie at the heart of the series. Dr. Cardosa gives off incredibly Mengelisk vibes as it is, and the longer he's been working with GU, the more of a threat it makes him in our opinion because he's either so non-discrepant that he goes entirely unnoticed by the staff somehow, or he's so good at what he does that they can't possibly replace him despite knowing the extremes to which he tends to take things. Once again, either way, it will turn out to be entertaining for us, the audience, to see how this particular plot thread plays out, but one thing that we're not gonna have to sit down and figure out after racking our brains over it for days on end is the fact that we're going to see a Soup v Soup showdown towards the climax of the show and it will feature both of Gen V's golden prospects.
Golden Boy's team versus Marie Moreau's team. The final few moments of the trailer are dedicated to action sequences that feature Andre flipping over cars, Marie flipping over dudes, and Golden Boy flipping out at everyone and everything that isn't him. We already know that he's gonna be certified insane because the Gen V team gave him the Homelander murder eyes as part of his power set, which is never a good sign for someone's mental health in this universe. But then we see Golden Boy casually tossing Jordan Lee through a glass pane as if they were a ragdoll. And since we've already established that Jordan and Marie will most likely have some kind of friendship in the series, it's safe to assume that this scuffle takes place as part of a larger showdown between two groups on campus. The soup traditionalists who are inspired by Homelander and led by Golden Boy and the soup radicals who are inspired by Starlight and will be headed by Marie Moreau if things end up going the way we think they will. It's going to be a blast to see some of the best choreographed fights in the superhero media game play out in front of our eyes, but we're more connected with the implications of the said fight. Fight. Gen V is not a regular spin-off show where its developments do not have major implications for its parent franchise. In fact, it is going to be intricately woven into the narrative of the fourth season of The Voice, as both shows take place in roughly the same place and time frame in universe. Golden Boy becoming Homelander 2.0, or rather Soldier Boy 3.0, would stack the odds against Butcher's Boys in a way not even the comics could match up to. Amazon Prime's The Voice has already washed its source material in terms of its content's relatability, so we try trust that whatever path they end up putting Golden Boy on, it will end up making perfect narrative sense by the time everything is said and done. We're just too impatient to get to that point, but that's on us. Being a hero is not about glory. It's about sacrifice. As for this video, that is sadly going to have to be it. Finding these details wasn't as easy as we make it seem, but we aren't complaining because we do it all for you guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video, and let us know your personal theories for Gen V in the comments below. We'll see you guys in the next one.